Going into every single NBA season, I think there's a fair understanding amongst most fans that you categorize every single NBA team into three separate divisions. And I'm not talking about the divisions between conferences, I am actually talking about the divisions in rankings in terms of how good every NBA team actually is going into the said season. To give as basic of an explanation as possible, first off, you have the clear-cut championship contenders, you also have the outright tanking teams who really aren't even trying to get a playoff spot, and then you have the category that consumes about 75% of the NBA, which is the middle of the pack. Meaning teams that know they can't win a championship, but don't want to tank either, so they're sort of stuck in the middle ground and don't know what to do. And if you guys want a concrete example of what a middle of the pack team looks like, I can tell you right now in the 21st century, it has been this organization right here, the Charlotte Hornets. Don't get me wrong, they haven't been flat out terrible, they've had some decent years over the last decade or so. To be honest, I feel this is still how many fans around the entire NBA look at the Charlotte Hornets, but I am here to tell you right now in this video that they might be one of the most slept on teams in the entire NBA. And before you rush to the comments and try to call me crazy, let's jump right into it. One sec if you guys haven't yet, don't forget to like the video if you enjoy, subscribe, and turn on those noties to never miss another NBA video. Love you guys. Seriously, if you haven't subbed yet, please consider it because apparently 98% of you that watch these videos have not hit the subscribe button yet. I would appreciate it more than anything. But anyway, first things first, you guys, I want to get into the free agency signings for the Charlotte Hornets because this is something that hasn't been discussed much, even though they were some pretty solid moves, in my opinion. As if you did not see, they were able to bring in Kelly Oubre Jr. from the Golden State Warriors on a two-year deal worth $26 million. And I know this technically wasn't a free agent signing, but I'm still throwing it into their offseason moves, as the Hornets were able to acquire Mason Plumlee via trade and move up in the NBA draft as well. Then the last noticeable move by the Charlotte Hornets, just to run you fully up to speed, they signed Ish Smith to a two-year $9 million deal. Now, I know at first glance, when you look at these moves, the typical NBA fan wouldn't think anything of this whatsoever. But to be honest, with the cap situation of the Charlotte Hornets and the pick and plug pieces in the rotation that needed to be filled, I think the Charlotte Hornets came out of the 2021 offseason almost as good as they possibly could have. Let me get into this and tell you why. Now, I know going into the previous 2021 season, there was not a single person looking at this Hornets team and saying they were a championship contender. I can confidently say that when this team was healthy at the beginning of the season, they were surprising a lot of people. Gordon Hayward was performing a lot better than anyone expected. Terry Rozier had a breakout year and absolutely balled out the entire season. And on top of that, you had the 2021 Rookie of the Year in LaMelo Ball. Again, it was a shame that this team wasn't able to stay healthy, but when they were, this was one of the more entertaining teams to watch in the entire league, in my opinion. And because this lineup and rotation was working better than anyone expected, I feel like the Hornets went into the offseason with the intent of retaining the rotation that they knew could work. That reason right there is why they brought on these three pieces in the offseason. Kelly Oubre Jr. is going to be an amazing spark to throw in this rotation, whether he is starting or coming off of the bench. And then you have the Mason Plumlee acquisition, which is pretty much Cody Zeller 2.0, but a little bit better. Because when you look at the comparison of major statistics, it's nothing crazy, but still, you could make that argument. Some of you watching might ask the question, why would they try to resemble the exact same roster and rotation when they finished as the 10th seed in the Eastern Conference, with a 33 and 39 overall record? Now again, I won't blame it completely on this, but we do have to consider the fact that their team was heavily injured throughout the entire season. But also, and I think this is something that most NBA fans do not completely understand yet, but the Charlotte Hornets might just have the best and most potential in their young core out of any team in the entire league. Now I know for some people that might seem like a little bit of a stretch, but just hear me out. Four of the major rotational players on this Charlotte Hornets team last year and going forward in the near future are all all under 23 years old. You have Miles Bridges, Jalen McDaniels, and PJ Washington, who all are currently 23 years old. Then you got the reigning rookie of the year, who really seems like the sky is the limit for him, coming in at 20 years old. And then, not to mention, you also have two first-round picks coming in in James Booknight and Kai Jones, who are both currently 20 years old right now as well. I'm also confident that as soon as this season, you will be seeing these two getting some solid minutes in a rotation. But either way, to get back on track, of the four main people to this young Charlotte Hornets core. You take a look at all of their numbers side by side, I know they're not going to stand out as anything crazy for some of them, but trust me, if you watched any Charlotte Hornets basketball this year, you would have saw that these four fit perfectly into the rotation and style of play the Hornets have. Like, seriously, you guys, I am not even a Charlotte Hornets fan personally, but I am beyond excited to see this team grow and what the future holds. Because again, we got to shift this conversation back to the man who has taken the center spotlight for the Charlotte Hornets, and that is this man right 
Magic here, LaMelo Ball. Let's go ahead and pull up LaMelo Ball's numbers one more time from his rookie season as he finished the 2021 season with averages of around 16 points, 6 rebounds, and 6 assists per game, shooting 44% from the field overall, 35% from 3, and 76% from the free throw line. Now, I know that some people argue with LaMelo Ball's rookie season that his efficiency wasn't too great. You know, I'll agree in saying that his efficiency wasn't outstanding by any means, but there's one thing about his efficiency that we all need to understand, and I've stated it time and time again in this video, and it's the fact that he was putting up these numbers entering the NBA at 19 years old. Like, let's be real here. If you throw any 19-year-old into the NBA relatively being a leader and the ball handler of a team, I don't think his numbers are going to be anything crazy in terms of efficiency. That might be a hot take, and if it is, so be it. But to summarize what I wanted to say, it's the fact that LaMelo Ball falling perfectly into the laps of the Charlotte Hornets in the 2020 NBA Draft has really seemed to lay the blueprint for this team and put all of the pieces in the right place. I'm not trying to say that the Charlotte Hornets team wasn't on the rise before LaMelo got there, but his game and style of play just adds something extra to this Hornets team that really has the potential to take them to the next level. Something else about this Charlotte Hornets team that I don't think many other people know or realize is the fact that they have so many different valuable players that they can move around to form more rotations than many other NBA teams. Take for example that the Charlotte Hornets ran up to six different starting rotations at different points throughout last season. Again, I know a big reason for this was due to injuries, but still, especially with the pieces they added this year, I could definitely see them mixing things up a lot depending on the team they play that given night. I don't know you guys, maybe some of you watching do have high expectations for the Hornets going into next season. I feel there is not enough talk about this team and what they are capable of, not just this year, but over the next five years as well. I am not going to give my prediction of how good they will be next season. I am not that confident in myself. However, this is where I want to hear what you guys have to say. So please let me know, you guys, in the comments down below what you think the Charlotte Hornets' final record will be at the end of the 2022 season. Do you have them as a lock playoff team? Do you have them in the play-in tournament? Let me hear what you guys think. Also, again, if you haven't yet, don't forget to leave a like on the video if you enjoy and subscribe while you're down there. Really can't say it enough, you guys. Brand new NBA videos on a daily basis around here. Believe me when I say you do not want to miss what we got coming on the channel going forward. The season is right around the corner, you guys, and I am so excited. But one more time, I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you more than anything in the world. You all know this, and I will see you guys in the next video.